Union Terminal is best viewed through the spray of the fountain, a white geyser spraying skyward as water cascades over the green basin. Black and white photos show West End residents dipping their feet in the cool waters of the iconic fountain in the heat of summer. The 44,000 gallon fountain is the exclamation point on the National Historic Landmark's remarkable exterior. The fountain is part of an ornate plaza of limestone, granite, and landscaping, all sitting atop portions of the museum spaces below, including the Duke Energy Children's Museum and the Dalton Street Tunnel. The fountain is uh, architecturally and from an aesthetic point of view a very important part of the complex, of the design, and it was advanced for its time when it was constructed in 1933. But there were some design issues that uh, in the last 80 years have manifested themselves in a bad way. The waterproof layer in the construction of the original fountain was at the very bottom, between the concrete structure of the fountain and the plaza deck below. This subjected the concrete structure of the fountain to water damage. Water would seep into the concrete and when the weather got cold, it would freeze, causing it to expand and break up the concrete. Elsewhere on the plaza, aged and outdated waterproofing allowed water to enter the portions of the building that sit directly below. So we've known for a while what the issues really are, but they're difficult to solve. And really the only way to solve them was to remove the fountain from the plaza. The entire plaza, including the fountain, was removed so crews could apply waterproofing measures to the deck beneath. Prior to the plaza removal, survey crews used 3D laser scans to capture tens of thousands of measurements, including dimensions and elevation, creating a precise map of the fountain. Once the entire plaza was waterproofed, crews began faithfully recreating the fountain using those digital surveys along with historic photos and original architectural drawings as a guide. The scans revealed the intricacies of the fountain. It features seven scallop cascades, each one a different shape and height. Each pool of the fountain intentionally has a different volume as well, so that, along with the cascades, it creates an optical illusion that the drops and pools are all the same if viewed from the front of the fountain. To recreate the scallops, construction crews used a 3D computer-aided router to cut dense foam pieces into the relief shape of the scallops. Each form was individually numbered and coated with a Noxcrete release agent to prevent the concrete from sticking. As concrete was pumped into the foam, the scallop's unique shape was impressed on it. Once the concrete was poured, a two-layer polyurea waterproofing system was applied to prevent water from penetrating and damaging the concrete fountain basin. The new design directly protects the concrete basin and the plaza waterproofing beneath the fountain protects the museum spaces below. With the concrete structure in place and coated with the new waterproofing system, historic granite, limestone, and decorative clamshell spouts that had been carefully removed and cataloged were returned to their place on the plaza and fountain. The final layer of the fountain is green terrazzo with a coarse, rustic finish. The terrazzo finish may surprise some guests, but it's true to the fountain's original finish. However, over the decades, the original terrazzo was damaged and removed, replaced instead with a waterproof paint. This is a sample of uh, the original 1930s terrazzo finish in the fountain. This would have been the, the finished surface uh, to give it the green appearance and a little bit of the texture with the, with the stones. There were lots of different mock-ups and testing to get the color right, and it looks very, very similar to the original sample. Now, the fountain resembles much more closely what visitors would have seen in 1933. For the most part, everything above the waterline is original. Limestone and decorative clamshell spouts have all been repaired and restored. Underneath, however, Floor inlets, wall inlets, and suction drains have been strategically relocated as part of a high-efficiency filtration system, and overflow sensors help regulate water flow. Atop the building, an anemometer measures wind speeds and automatically adjusts the height of the central geyser, so that on a windy day, the fountain sprays a little lower to keep from inadvertently soaking a guest walking on the sidewalk alongside the fountain. While crews today took steps to make the fountain more efficient, they did so while carefully maintaining its original look and function. It's a testament to the lasting legacy of the original craftsman who designed and built a fountain that continues to wow guests.